Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we'll be going over Flamazine, which is part of my wound care product series. Um, but first, if you could hit like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated as it does help my channel grow. So let's get started. Flamazine is a cream, so it's a sterile 1% silver water-based mixture cream um, that contains no preservatives. Um, it does require a physician or nurse practitioner uh, order, so it does come from the pharmacy, so you would have a doctor's order with this um, to be used on your patient. So you 100% have to have a physician or nurse practitioner order for this. Um, you can't just use this on a patient that it hasn't been prescribed for. So with Flamazine being a uh, silver product, we are going to use it for wounds with signs and symptoms of a local infection. So local infection is when it's just localized, it's not deep spreading, something that you need antibiotics for. Um, at this point, it's just something that you can treat topically. So we'll use the Flamazine because it has the 1% silver, which is an antimicrobial. So we'll use this for uh, wounds, burns, and skin grafts. Um, we're not going to use this on patients who, has a, who have a sensitivity or allergy to silver or sulfa products. It does also have sulfa in it. Um, so if they're sensitive or allergic to silver or sulfa, we do not use flamazine. We're also not going to use this in pregnant or breastfeeding mothers um, or premature infants or newborns in their first months of life. So we're not going to use this on babies. Um, and it, it is up to a doctor's discretion of how old a, a child needs to be when it's used. Um, but just know in the first months of life, it should not be used just in case it is ordered. As always, there is uh, precautions for flamazine. So prolonged application um, causes a systematic absorption of the silver, which can cause a permanent darkness, uh, like a dark coloration to the skin. Um, and it's caused by the overuse of silver on that tissue. Um, so that can, that's just something to keep in mind for prolonged use. Um, we're going to use with caution um, with people with uh, liver or kidney impairment. We're going to monitor white blood cell count for leukopenia, which is a low white blood cell count. The use of flamazine and enzymatic debriders may cause an inactivation of the enzymatic debrider agent. Um, so if you're using a, something to get, say, slough off of a wound, it, it it's gonna it could cause that to not work properly. Um, so you got to be really cautious with what you're mixing with the flamazine because it could just inactivate the product. So it is a, a large waste of money. Um, use of flamazine may lead to development of pseudo eschgar. So what that is, is it, it's a thick yellow um, covering. It's like a gelatinous covering over the wound bed. Um, and it's caused by the flamazine and the wound drainage um going together and it just forms this thick layer over top of the wound bed so when we are going to use a flamazine we have to prepare the wound first so we always start anytime um, a doctor prescribes uh, a medication which is, is a medication it's a cream prescribed we're going to uh, label and date the container because it is only for that patient it's a single client use only um, next we are going to irrigate the wound and peri wound with sterile saline um, so that removes any loose tissue uh, we're going to get rid of any eschgar or blistering um, if it is a burn um, presented in the wound base um, if it's in the peri wound, we're, we're going to kind of leave that. But if it's in the wound base, we, we need to take care of that. Um, we're going to dry the peri wound skin and apply a skin barrier to the peri wound. When we're applying flamazine, we want to make sure it's about the thickness of three millimeters to five millimeters. Or what we can do is take a four by four gauze um, and kind of just 
you see how, how big the wound is, cover that area with like a butter layer um, on the gauze. It's just easier application um, if you're using, uh, just going right directly to the wound bed, make sure you're using a cotton tip applicator um, just to keep the, um, the tube as clean as possible. Obviously, once it's open, nothing's sterile anymore after it's open. Um, and then you're just going to cover the wound with an absorbent dressing or sterile gauze. For removal of the wound dressing and the flamazine, you're going to just gently remove um, the dressing. If it's stuck on there, uh, saturate it with normal saline and it will gently remove within about a minute. Um, and then you're going to irrigate and cleanse the wound with normal saline, um, just removing any cream that's there. If a pseudo eschgar is uh, developed over the wound, we have to remove this. Um, so what you're going to do is have a just a normal saline soaked gauze and gently but firmly remove it um, because you can't treat a wound if if you have eschgar or pseudo eschgar or slough you're not actually treating the wound that has to be removed to treat the wound um, or you're treating pretty much a scab we want to get to the wound base and actually treat that so if it's there it has to be removed um, frequency of dressing change is every 24 hours um, so you really don't want to be doing this every other day it, it needs to be daily um, and the expected outcome of using flamazine is that your local infections are resolved within two weeks I hope you found this uh, video educational and help you in your practice that's all I have for this video and I will catch you in my next one